I lecture a lot outside the academy, uh, and I'm always struck by the widespread reluctance of people, and I'm not blaming them, this is how they were educated, to accept the centrality of slavery to the Civil War. No, 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 they said, no, no, Professor, the war was caused by states' rights. No, 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 it was caused by the tariff. It was caused by individualism. All those are true enough, but the core question was slavery. In his second inaugural address, March 4th, 1865, when Lincoln was sworn in for his second term, he said, we'll talk about that great address down the road, he said, you know, folks, let's get serious here. I'm paraphrasing Lincoln. <laughs> let's get serious here. Everybody knows that slavery was the cause of the war. All know that slavery, now all know that slavery was somehow the cause of the war. Everybody did know that in 1865. They don't know it anymore. Of course, the trick is that somehow, how to explain that, how slavery was somehow. It's not just simple. Most Northerners were not abolitionists. And as I said, vis-a-vis -vis Reconstruction, a old, discredited, basically racist view of that era has amazing staying power in popular consciousness and in, and in journalism long after it has been utterly abandoned by historians. In one of my favorite books of history of a kind, The Fellowship of the Ring by Tolkien, he writes about the hobbits, quote, hobbits like to have books filled with things that they already knew, set out fair and square with no contradictions. Of course, this is a joke. The hobbits didn't actually know anything. They knew virtually nothing about the world around them, but they were satisfied because they, they had a familiar view of their own history. People liked familiar stories. That's why the term revisionist historian is a term of abuse out there in the public. Um, in the, the, didn't Governor Christie the other day accuse his critics of being revisionist historians? But to us, that's what we do. That is our job as historians, to be revisionists. That is to say, to rethink the past, to think about new perspectives, to add new approaches. That's what historians are supposed to do. But um, the point is, familiarity is not the measure of the truthfulness of historical accounts. This is the Statue of Freedom, designed to be placed atop the Capitol in Washington, D.C. in the 1850s. They were rebuilding the, the Capitol, and um, a sculptor designed this Statue of Freedom. The process was overseen by the Secretary of War, Jefferson Davis of Mississippi, who will later, of course, become President of the Confederacy. This is the initial design for the Statue of Freedom. If you've looked at the top of the Capitol in Washington, that is not what's up there now. Why? Because it's kind of hard to see, but the figure of freedom has a cap of liberty on her head. The cap of liberty is a symbol of, of freedom going back to the Roman Empire. It's a symbol of emancipated slaves. It was adopted during the French Revolution. In much iconography in the 19th century, figures supposed to represent freedom were wearing this cap of liberty. But to Jefferson Davis, this design seemed to imply that there was some connection between American freedom and the freedom of slaves. So he ordered a new design made, which replaced the cap of liberty with an Indian headdress, a Native American's headdress. And that's what's up there on the Capitol today. Um, this, so that, not this never got made, at least the top of it, but the statue was cast in Italy in pieces, shipped to the United States, assembled in 1859 by a slave craftsman in Maryland. It was not installed until 1863 atop the Capitol. By then, the Union lay in ruins, and the emancipation of most of the slaves had been decreed by President Lincoln. And so this is just a way of getting into, this is our task for the next few weeks, to investigate how the United States plunged into the greatest crisis in our history and how a profoundly different nation emerged from the carnage. So we'll see you next Monday and we'll start with the history.